everyone today we are going to learn about aristotle he was a greek philosopher born in 384 bce before common era and he was also a poet and a writer and the word aristotle itself means the best purpose he was born in an affluent family where his father nicomachus was personal physician to king amintas of macedon and had privilege of moving around the royal palace and as you know he was a pupil of plato and he joined the latos academy at the age of 18 and later he became the tutor of alexander the great now let us analyze aristotle's poetics it's a 26 chapter treatise and what is poetics poetics means science of poetry in poetics aristotle is discussing and analyzing the concepts and art of creating poetry The exact origin of Aristotle's poetics are not known but researchers believe that it was composed around 330 BCE and was preserved primarily as the notes by Aristotle's students. It deals with how to judge and evaluate poetry and how to write a good poetry. Here poetry is used in general sense it included drama and music also. Poetics has been the central document in the study of aesthetics. It was first discovered in translation during the Renaissance. Later on, Sidney approved all the unities that Aristotle had talked about, but later Johnson disagreed with him and said that certain unities were not necessary. Whether for agreement or disagreement, critics always go back to Aristotle. Okay. His a- idea of action in tragedy or in epic has been approved by most critics aristotle just does not make statements he tries to corroborate everything that he says through examples and through actual reference to poets and artists he tells us that how does a child learn the child learns right from its birth through the act of imitation he or she tries to imitate actions or what of words that are spoken by those around him so imitation is ingrained within us and this imitation has to be used creatively and intellectually by the imaginative artist what artist does is he can take an action as it is or he can think of an action as he thinks it is or he may think of an action as it ought to be he can imitate life but through his creativity he can add much to it in aristotle's view life can be duplicated or imitated or the action of mimesis can takes place through imitation poetry attempts to imitate life through rhythm language and harmony for him the poet is a creator and the poet represents life through his sublime skill of observation a poet observes life as a first person in a subjective way or as a third person in objective way or taking another personality watches the events as an observer nature of imitation depends upon the object mode and medium of imitation while looking into the object of imitation it means the major object of imitation is men in action art imitates life by presenting men as better than they are in life with sublime qualities or as a true to life as they are or as worse than they are with low morals it is the real skill of the poet that enables him to represent men different from what they are and at the same time to be true to life and medium of imitation a poet may represent life through rhythm language and harmony music is the example for imitation of life through rhythm and harmony dancing imitates characters emotion and action through rhythmical movements verse poetry is an example for imitation of life through language he includes epic poetry tragedy comedy diatrambic poetry and even some kinds of music in this process of imitation if the artist makes a factual error then it affects the whole work the work is completely destroyed through that error which the poet or the artist makes then he is also talking about the types of poetry 
അരിസ്റ്റോട്ടിൽ ക്ലാസിഫൈസ്ഡ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് പോയിട്രി ഓൺ ദ ബേസിസ് ഓഫ് ദ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ഇമിറ്റേഷൻ ഇമിറ്റേഷൻ ഇസ് ഓഫ് നോബിൾ ക്വാളിറ്റീസ് ആൻഡ് ഓഫ് നോബിൾ ആക്ഷൻ ദെൻ ഹി കോൾസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എപ്പിക് ഓർ ട്രാജഡി എപ്പിക് പോയിട്രി ഓർ ട്രാജഡി ഗിവ്സ് പ്ലഷർ ടു ദ റീഡർ ആസ് ഇറ്റ് ഡിപ്പിക്സ് മെൻ ആസ് ബെറ്റർ ദാൻ ദ ആർ In satire and comedy, when we see characters who are lower and whose actions are lower, we think we are not them and therefore it gives us pleasure as well because we think we are better. In epic poetry and tragedy, you can see a number of similarities as well as a number of dissimilarities. We can see what are the similarities between epic poetry and tragedy. Both attempt to imitate noble men in action. both have unity of plot both can use the same subject matter for mimesis both deal with great and noble deeds noble actions and sufferings both have all the six elements common to them including peripety and anagnorisis both can be either simple or complex all the elements of epic are present in tragedy but not all of the elements of tragedy are present in epic now we can see what are the differences between epic poetry and tragedy epic poetry uh, the medium of la- medium is language whereas in tragedy the medium of expression is action in epic poetry it is in verse form tragedy is in dramatic form an epic poetry it is to be narrated and tragedy it is to be performed in epic poetry it is confined to one meter that is ex- hexameter in tragedy you can use different meters generally we use iamb in epic poetry we use device of imagination whereas in tragedy we use music and spectacle action in epic poetry has no time limit but action in tragedy confined to a single day unity of time is the and content can be lengthier and more complex with more fantastic events in epic poetry whereas in tragedy it is meant to be watch and so the length is again shortened and many incidents can take place simultaneously at different places and and jumping forth and back in epic but in tragedy it has to be more focused on the credibility it has to be taken place at one place only imagination is required for appreciation in the case of epic poetry music and spectacle are the devices for appreciation for tragedy epic poetry cannot be appreciated in a single sitting but tragedy can be appreciated in a single sitting generally critics considered the epic superior to tragedy but aristotle does not agree with them why do they put it at a higher level because they think that epic is meant for higher level of people and tragedy is meant for the lower class people because it is performed and they can easily understand it aristotle talks of the superiority of tragedy over epic aristotle establishes tragedy as a superior art form over the epic and he talks about the following specialities tragedy has everything that an epic has the additional elements like music and spectacle in tragedy enable the audience to enjoy and appreciate tragedy providing an indulgent pleasure it can be easily enjoyed in a single sitting and it is given in a convincing manner it is more closer to life the most important thing that is present in tragedy and that is absent in epic is cathartic effect